What about psychotherapy uh, as an alternative or to be added with medication? Is it something you recommend? Yeah, psychotherapy is extremely important. Uh, there are many other psychosocial therapies, not just psychotherapy, that is to say one person talking with the therapist one-to-one -one, or therapy in a group session where people discuss amongst themselves with the help of a group therapist uh, to get through certain problems and understand them better. This is extremely important. Uh, and there are two basic approaches. One is what we call psychoeducation, which is simply helping the person and the person's family and entourage understand what the illnesses are, what the treatments are, what the likely evolution is, what one can do to protect oneself and lead the best life one can lead. And so it's, it's really to um, put the accent on information, which is part of the treatment of any illness, indeed. There's another part which uh, addresses more uh, the anxiety and depressive components that uh, often accompany a uh, psychotic disorder. And these can be social phobias, panic attacks, generalized anxiety, uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and sometimes major depression. So uh, uh, these kinds of uh, symptoms are amenable to treatment with, with what is called cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, there are other therapies that can be useful on some occasions, um, like uh, there are uh, approaches now that are looking at mindfulness in helping reduce anxiety. Uh, so th that's very important. Uh, traditional psychodynamic, or what we call in the old days Freudian psychoanalytic treatments, probably have a little less uh, science behind them, but we do use them anyway because they uh, underline uh, to the patient and the family some of the underlying defensive mechanisms that we use. And sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's a useful adjunct, but the more scientific treatments are uh, the cognitive behavior therapy, uh, uh, which is very important. The, um, there are other uh, treatments, of course, uh, that uh, look at, um, let's say, the psychological functioning of a person. And one of the treatments that's extremely important uh, for cognitive functioning is called cognitive remediation. Uh, we understand that a significant number of people with psychosis will have cognitive decline or difficulty in attending, planning, memory, uh, and this can have uh, an impact on everyday life, return to school, return to work, and so on. So there are uh, computerized programs and, and, uh, and uh, plans for helping people to regain some of their lost cognitive ability based uh, essentially on what was done in people who had head uh, trauma many years ago and had also a certain cognitive hill to climb in order to get a little bit better. So cognitive remediation is very interesting. Not always available as it should be, but it's very interesting. Uh, there's another uh, treatment uh, which is called um, uh, supported work. Now, uh, many people with uh, a psychotic illness like uh, one of the schizophrenias will not be able to go into competitive work. In fact, studies have shown that perhaps only 15% of people will return to a regular competitive job like every other citizen without additional help. So that means 85% of people uh, need some help. And supportive work essentially involves uh, finding a job that's adapted to you, usually a part-time job, sometimes a very part-time job to begin with, just a couple of hours a week to get started. Uh, and we have then uh, the support of the uh, uh, work agent who is actually trying to find the job, doing the liaison between the patient and the work, the boss, the entourage, and the, cl and the clinical staff. So that if something does go amiss with the work problem, the clinical staff is alerted immediately and, and can make an intervention, whether it be to change the medicine, to give the person a couple of days off and so on. So uh, it's very clear that uh, uh, supported work uh, will actually increase self-esteem, get people back into the community, and also increase cognitive abilities because it's a little bit like physiotherapy for the mind because you're given tasks to do, your brain is automatically thinking, okay, how am I gonna solve this problem? And it goes ahead and, and actually starts to form new circuits. This, uh, this of course depends on what we call the neuroplasticity of the brain, which uh, we know is at the basis of recovery in this kind of illness, where a person, by doing activities that are more healthy and avoiding activities that are less healthy, actually can reduce some of the um, circuitry in, in the brain. Not all of it, unfortunately, but some of it.
in a way. So it's like building the muscle in your brain. That's correct. So those are, those are the more important um, psychotherapy interventions, I would say, extremely important. Uh, there are other ones, of course, that we could mention, like uh, uh, pet therapy, art therapy, music therapy, and so on. Uh, but these are the more important uh, ones with a, uh, a uh, scientific uh, background to them.